Hello and welcome to all of you, no matter which church you've come from tonight. And here we are again, almost in Lent. Comes around very quickly, doesn't it? Lent is a time of reflection, preparation and hope. And therefore, I think for Christians, it's a very exciting time for us. A time to take stock, to reflect, and possibly to change. To change our hearts, our minds, and the way we live our lives. And this year, the clergy have chosen to do the Free to Live course, written on behalf of the Jubilee Centre. It's an excellent resource to help us consider how we Christians can lead lives that build the kingdom of God. Now there's a very old saying that there are only two things in life that are predictable, death and taxes. And that is because we have no idea what is going to come next in life. What is around the next corner. And it is in those times that our faith is really tested. Because we have a God that is never changing. He is solid and reliable. He won't let us down, regardless of what is going on around us or how we feel. And tonight, Ian read from the Old Testament and just a couple of examples of the advice that the Old Testament has. Advice to inspire God's people in times of difficulty and in times of hardship. It gives structures for community living so that whatever happens within a community or a church there are four back options. So it'll always help us survive, whether physically, emotionally, or spiritually. And it encourages, the Old Testament will encourage all believers to know and understand God's character and the truth of his word, so that we can all survive spiritually in any circumstance. And tonight we heard in the Old Testament reading an example of those structures. I'm so sorry, since I had my feet done, I can't hear properly. <laughs> I know that's bizarre, <laughs> but so it's echoing. <laughs> so one example of that was the year of Jubilee. It occurs every 50 years, commencing with a huge trumpet blowing and everyone would go back to the, reclaim the land that had belonged to their family. This land could have been sold or taken away to pay debts. And it meant that debt, inequality and poverty were always limited just by the people, the Israelites, being obedient to God and following his law. That way people could be blessed, draw closer to God and respect his brother. Now we don't have that law anymore, but there are many ways in which we can organise our lives to please God. God is not delighted or pleased necessarily if concerning our deeds, our money, our politics, or even about our ability to do things well. But God is pleased when our heart attitude is right. And he delights when our relationships are good our relationships with him, our relationships with each other, and our relationships with those outside the church. We read that in the Gospels that Jesus sums up the Old Testament laws in one sentence. Love God and love your neighbour. And this was hard for the worshippers of the Old Testament because the rules and laws which were set about to love, help them love God and their neighbours, often seemed to bind them up and tie them in knots. 
So much so that the rules in the Old Testament became so much more important than God. We are very fortunate now, living in the New Testament or post-Jesus times, because John 10.10 states that through Jesus' life, death and resurrection, we, that's all of us here, can live life and live life to the full. We don't need to get caught up in laws and religion. Instead, we come and live a life that is free. What kind of things could we be free from? I think we could be free from criticism, criticism of others, and be free to be the people that God created us to be, true to our characters and our gifts. I wonder if we could be free from loneliness and suffering because we have a new family, all our fellow believers, because we're truly called to love and support each other. I think we're free from having to succumb to the pressure to do things that the world does. Instead, we do what Christ wants us to do. And we're free from the restrictions put on structured religion. Instead, Jesus came so we can be free to worship in ways that draw cl us closer to him, liberating our mind and our spirit. And this is what the Lent course, Jubilee Lifestyle, is about. About discovering Christ's ways of doing things, which are really quite different from the world's standards and methods of doing things. The aim of the course is to help participants be free to live, reflecting God's way, and helping us make decisions both small and large in our lives. So, how can we make a real difference to the world? I think the first thing that us Christians need to decide is that our lives are special. We need to have the mindset that says our lives are good and we are here to make a difference. The book of Romans says that we are chosen and adopted as heirs of the kingdom of God. You and I are called to be sons and daughters who live royal lives. We are to recognise our specialness and to accept our birthright, follow our calling to be children of God. And the Queen is a good example of this. This year, as we all know, we're celebrating her Diamond Jubilee, 60 years of being the Queen. And as we know, the Princess Elizabeth was visiting Kenya when she heard the news of her father's death. She boarded the plane in, at Nairobi, a princess. Yet she knew when she disembarked in the UK, she needed to take the role of queen. She accepted that calling and knew her role was to be a sovereign. This was Queen Elizabeth's birthright. She knew how special she was and she was acutely aware of how she would live her life, how it would affect others in the, in the UK and in other countries. She couldn't ignore her responsibility and had to step up to the mark to be a role model for others. And I think we too need to recognize our birthright. We are royalty. Okay, none of us live in Buckingham Palace. But we are members of God's royal family, children of God. And in the same way as the Queen recognises her calling and her abilities, so we must do the same. We have influence and power, and we have a calling to make the right decisions, godly decisions, so that the kingdom of God can grow in our neighbourhood, our country, in the whole world. However, this only comes when we recognise our specialness and our calling, but also our responsibility. We need to make choices that reflect God's kingdom, of God's kingdom not the world around us, 
in the same way that the Queen makes choices to re reflect her sovereignty and not of another country. Because we are called to be salt and light in a very dark world, and in a dark world where people yearn for light. We are called to be people who do more than go to church on a Sunday. We're called to be Christians, someone who has God's character in the way we live our lives. And I think we saw that recently with the group of bishops who spoke out in the House of Lords. Now they talked about the capping of benefits and whether child benefits should be included in that capping. I don't want to go into the merits of each argument. Instead, I want to commend them because they use their power and authority to speak out for the poor, the vulnerable and weak. They spoke out and used their Christian heart to affect the law being passed by our government. And I think that's fantastic. Not because they're bishops, oh no. Not even because they're priests. Because they have no more power or authority than the laity. I'm really, I think it's fantastic just because they're Christians. Those bishops who spoke out are joint heirs with us in the kingdom of God. They acknowledged their birthright, they acknowledged who they are in Christ and spoke out. In the reading that Eric read for us today from the New Testament, it's from the letter written by James, Jesus' brother, instructing us not to have favourites. Because if we have favourites, and we end up treating someone better than another. And many of us do have favourites in how we make decisions. If Jesus says, love your neighbour as yourself, therefore we must view all people, regardless of wealth, colour, gender, people group, religion, or even churchmanship, as equals, as the same as ourselves. Because James says if we don't, then we are sinning. Harsh words. And this is the attitude we need to adopt on our individual lives and churches. And the Lent course gives some ideas of how you can look at these areas of your life. How we can look and view people equally inside the church and outside. And I believe we're give, we are called to take opportunities to reflect this to the world. Now, I'm just going to ask you some rhetorical questions so you can start thinking about your lives, your, your very different lives, and see how your circumstances could be challenged this Lent. One area that the book looks at is the banks we use. What do we do with our savings? Do we live within our means? Or do we live on credit cards in constant debt? Do we use our money to build up the kingdom of God? Or do we just buy our latest, a latest gadget? Where do we invest our money? Do you know where your bank invests its money? Your savings? Some banks invest in weapons, sex trafficking, pornography. So inadvertently, you're investing in those areas as well. Fortunately, there are some banks, such as the co-op, that have ethical investments or green investments. So your money is actually contributing to a better community, a better world. Do we place our investments in big companies or in microfinance, where small companies and communities are built up time. What do you spend your time on? There was a saying that I heard in Kenya, and actually it's repeated in the book. Westerners have watches, but no time. Africans have time, but no watches. So true. We run around spent busying ourselves, 
that we don't have time for the important people, our friends and family, or to even help and support those in the church. Statistics are terrible if you look on the web. Some of us have a love affair with the, with our, with the internet and others for the television. That most people watch over four hours a day. If you can find four hours of good television, please let me know. How about your purchases? Do you buy the cheapest purchase? Or are you a brand person? All my stuff comes from Waitrose. Or do you look at where they come from? How your purchases affect others? Have the farmers and manufacturers received a fair trade for their goods? Have innocent people been damaged to get the goods to you? Do you buy ethically when you buy products such as milk, um, sorry, yeah, tea, coffee, wine, sugar, fruits, cotton, or even locally when you buy your milk? There are many products in the market that the slave trade have used to produce them. Sweatshops are not uncommon in any country. There is much more to being a Christian and living for Christ than coming to church on Sunday. And this Lent, we have a wonderful opportunity to consider these areas and review how they affect us personally and review how they reflect our community and our world, and especially the more vulnerable. So in conclusion, we are all chosen to be children of the kingdom of God. We have a birthright and an inheritance. And each one of us has a role where we have rights and an exciting way of living, like the Queen, knowing and accepting our way and our calling. But with that comes responsibility to look after those who are more vulnerable than us. And we need to be like the bishop, speaking out and making decisions that help those less fortunate than we are. And we need to grasp those opportunities to use our power and abilities to change the world around us by our actions, by our way of thinking, choices, relationships and purchases. I pray that this year, the Lent groups have wisdom to tackle these tough areas and that you allow them to change your life as you recognise the power and authority that you have in your responsible actions and attitudes.